Okay, hi and welcome everyone. My name is Erin Remington. I'm assistant curator here at Saatchi Art and we welcome to we welcome you to Dallas Virtual Edition Fairs. I'm going to share my screen. Today I will be doing the tour on um, Curator Picks, Five Artists Not to Miss in the Other Art Fair Dallas. Um, the Other Art Fair is presented by Saatchi Art, and the Other Art Fair is the UK's leading art fair to discover and buy art directly from artists. Um, this March marks the 10-year anniversary of the Other Art Fair, and the, and the partnership with Saatchi Art started in 2016. Um, a little bit of a history about the Other Art Fair if you're not familiar. Um, over the past 10 years, the other art fair has facilitated over 44, eight, over 44 art fairs um, in eight different cities and worked with 3,500 artists from over 20 countries. Um, and definitely during this pandemic, this has um, brought some new challenges and some new um, fulfilling ways to share our artists. And we have this amazing um, art fair for you to take part in. Um, so I'm gonna just hop right in um, with these amazing artists that I wanna share with you and show you their booth and some works that I really love um, from their portfolio. Um, we're gonna start first with Derek David Barron. Um, I put all the booth numbers on here. They're all, all five artists are actually in the green room. Um, and Derek studied at the Art Institute in Laguna Beach, and he also went to the Art Center in Pasadena, but now lives right outside of Dallas. Um, so we're happy to put, have him part of our Dallas Fair. Um, he's inspired by everyday items, um, really exploring childlike energy and uses layers of complexity you'll see with text in his works and different imagery scattered across his canvas. Um, you'll see that sometimes he will layer his paint and have um, markings that you can almost see, or there is numbers or words that are perhaps behind these different layers of paint. Um, Derek explains his process as he first starts with um, with markings and pushing and pulling his paint. And then he interjects these memories. You can see um, Schaefer Lake on the right. There's, we see children um, writing um, a swing set and you have fish beneath and you have elements of these lines and markings and what he describes as pushing and pulling. Um, and there is a sense of, of pop imagery in that where you have this bright yellow background with the fish and this collaging of um, putting this uh, graphite or gray, black and white um, fish on top of it. I really love these pieces because I think that they are so striking and have a design element that would look so beautiful in a home or an office, something that you wouldn't be um, get tired of seeing over a long period of time and really has um, as you can see, better to scale in, in his booth. They have, they're um, pretty decently sized, but not too big where um, they could take up a whole wall. They really read in a beautiful way. Um, and this um, Uberwinden, uh, this bright yellow piece really reflects that childlike energy that he is speaking of, that he is um, interjecting into his works. So go ahead and check out Derek's booth. Um, the second booth we're going to be going to is the artist, the lovely artist, Yasmin Yusif. Um, her booth is stunning with these dark moody colors and beautiful indigo blue. Um, Yasmin is a mixed media artist. She's also a Middle Eastern dancer and she has a user experience designer. Um, so she is a woman of many talents. Um, she grew up in a multi-ethnic blended family and she speaks of that as informing her journey uh, through her different creative careers. Um, her works use collage, cyanotypes, paint, plaster, vintage ephemera, and gold leaf. Her works are largely influenced by the natural world. Um, in this first series, The Animal Shield, you can see the moth on the left and the mini fox on the right. Um, 
And uh, I was really drawn to these pieces. I think that the light pastel coloring in the background and then the, the detailing of the animals really drew me to them. Um, and when I asked her about these pieces, she specifically spoke of the moth and how the moth really has so much symbolism um, as it's associated with bravery and boldness. And um, as you as we know, moths are drawn to a flame in the darkness. And um, there's just something really beautiful about an imagery of a moth and that, that boldness. Um, and she uses the motif of a hexagon, bringing a nod to ancient civilizations. And hexagon is usually associated with the shield and, and um, thoughts of protection and this idea of, of, of us protecting nature and living creatures and in essence, them protecting us as well. It's a cyclical relationship. Um, and then this other series, um, which is called um, Lessons from the Moon. Um, these two are from that, that series. Um, and these works were largely um, influenced by the pandemic. Um, Yasmin speaks about how she's been really comforted by nature and flora and the natural world around her during this time. And the moon being a, um, a great inspiration and how it was just a... Uh, a steadfast in the night, every night. And, and I just love how she uses the circles and the geometric triangular shape, but then juxtaposes it with this, um, you know, natural leaf flora and really just the deep blues give that calming, um, that calming sense in her works. Um, so thank you for sharing your works with us. Um, and we're gonna move on to our third booth here. Um, Margaret McNeil um, has beautiful pieces, has also very inspired by nature and flora. Um, Margaret lives in Dallas and she studied painting at the Wesley University in Connecticut. Um, when we were speaking about her pieces, she was talking about how she was very influenced um, by the pandemic and feeling of isolation in this past year. And, um, in the past, she has really been drawn to human figures, but presently has been much more inspired by the, natu the nature and the, um, the natural world around her. Um, so you'll see in, oops, my computer froze, oops. Okay, sorry, a little delayed. You'll see here that it's bold patterns, bright colors, flora that just, um, takes up your whole eye. And I was almost surprised that she was um, expressing this feeling of isolation because they hold so much joy. And I think that it's so interesting to see uh, for each person and creators what really came out of this time of pandemic. And um, I, I see her paintings as such optimism and beauty of accepting what is in front of us and what is um, continual, and we see that in nature, um, that seasons come and go, and um, we can really see that the natural world, you know, lives on. Um, she, um, she has a heavy impressionistic um, influence on her work, you can see in her brushwork, and also touch of surrealism um, in this compositions, because it's not quite um, you know, a vase of flowers is not quite um, a bush of flowers. On flowers eight, you see almost like this blushy cloud in the background and this wave of flowers going over it. So it has this surrealism or mystery to her pieces that I think are really unique and a very um, a surprising and interesting way to look at um, florals. And one, one other big inspiration for her is uh, textiles. And I definitely see that influence of having the florals and these different colors and mixing and not being afraid to um, kind of go outside the lines of what, of what is expected. Um, and I personally really love Untitled on the left. I really love the deep reds and the pinks and the, the deep greens. Um, I think that they are just really striking pieces. And um, I, I recommend going to her booth. You can really see a great example of these works, what they look like framed and just really stunning pieces to have um, in a home or an office or really anywhere. 
Um, great, we're gonna move along to our fourth artist. Um, our fourth artist is incredibly talented, Bartosz Bedo. Um, he was born in Poland and then moved to the UK to study art, um, but now lives, um, now lives in Dallas with his wife and his daughter. Um, he describes his, his, his art practice as not being completely realistic, but not abstract either. Um, it's a marriage of the two, and you'll see as we get a little bit closer to the work that it's beautiful. Um, Google Woman 3 has this really uh, rushed or loose brush work that I really love of his pieces, but you still get the realism. You can still see a, a human or female figure underneath, um, and Metacolor 2 has these bright colors, and I love when you can see the brushwork and you can see the paint and you almost, I look deep and I think, where did it start and where did it end? And it's um, almost like this meditative process where I could continue to scan up and down, up and down on the paintings. Um, and they are just beautiful uh, pieces to have. Um, here, um, disinformation too, I love this piece. I, I love ABC of the Green One, it, it reminds me of my childhood, but I was really drawn to disinformation too. Um, and when I inquired about this piece, he spoke about how it was inspired by the 1968, 1968 film, 2001 Space Odyssey, which I'm sure many of you guys have seen. Um, but just to put in perspective that this film obviously is speaking about how monkeys find a way or chimpanzees find a way to overturn the power and, um, take over. And so in this work, he's talking about how monkeys really symbolize that power of survival and hierarchy. And um, just both of these pieces using this really deep shades of green and blues. And I love when other colors are used to create form that are not of its natural state. And I think that it, it takes, um, it allows you to take a moment to really take in the color and to really, it has this gemstone, beautiful um, color hue that is just um, really beautiful. So I love, um, I love his works and I, I encourage you to look at the rest of his pieces as well because he is highly talented in how he, um, how he executes all of his paintings. So thank you Bartos for being, a part of the fair. And we're gonna wrap it up with our final artist. Um, give me a second, my computer is going slow. Barbara Kubel. Um, as you can immediately see, each of these artists are so different and um, have such different style. And that's what I love about the other art fairs, whether you're into impressionistic or realism or abstract, there's an artist there for you. And I love Barbara because her works are so dynamic and so interesting. She describes them as a mobile that you can walk from left to right and back and forth and see different objects within her, um, her, her canvas. Um, so she was born and raised in Austria. She studied art in Vienna. Um, she's lived in many different countries, including Austria, Switzerland, Brazil, and the United States. Um, she considers all of her international experiences as a part of understanding different people and cultures. And you'll see that, that she really is um, exploring the idea of crowds and group behaviors and how she would describe um, people within these different social, social situations, which has been a very interesting topic. I think everyone can agree on this last year of, of, of social distancing and social situations that have been very new for all of us. Um, and you'll see her works are all full of action and movement. A little closer up on, um, on her series of her printmaking. Um, she prints everything by hand with a simple folding bone and she works with very few materials, including a graphite stick, paper, natural colors, and a rough wood fiber. Um, wood cutting is a very demanding, um, laborious type of printmaking, but it has um, such energy when you see the works on paper and um, 
you can see the rigidity of the lines. And I think it really brings these figures to life and knowing that they are literally made from hand and natural form of wood and um, etching and creating these pictures, I think really breathes a fresh life and brings again the idea of just, these are one of a kind unique pieces of art. And these are, um, they have been pressed and moved and created from the fingertips of these artists, or from, from Barbara, I should say. And there, I think that that really creates a, a special sense in her work. Um, and she, she speaks about how she chooses bright colors to celebrate freedom within identity. And um, I love them. I think they're super striking. Um, I also just had to share a couple of, of her other non printmaking works because I think that she's a very skilled painter as well. Um, and you can see similarities between her, the works in the previous slide. Um, the human figure looks similar to the bird, wears a different dress here on the left. Um, but just using different materials and um, a, a painting. So they have that bright sense of color and also just um, exploring still that human dynamic and grouping and energy all together. Um, so thank you, Barbara, for being a part of the fair. And so that wraps up my tour here. I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing a few of the different selection of different artists that we have at the Dallas Virtual Fair. Um, if you have any other questions, um, feel free. Oops, trying to get to my last sl slide here. Um, I am a part of the curation team at Saatchi Art. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Art Advisory and let us know if you have any questions about any of these pieces that you've seen in this tour or any other questions you may have. And um, we are happy to help you. All right, thanks everyone. Here is our email and here's our information. Thank you.